Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin. Our guest today is an Emmy Award-nominated actress from the critically acclaimed television series House of Cards. She has an impressive list of film credits, including but not limited to Brokeback Mountain, Trans-Siberian, We Are Marshall, Shooter, and The Martian. You may also recognize her as Sue Storm in The Fantastic Four alongside her now husband, Jamie Bell. Kate Rooney Mara, not to be confused with Trisha Rooney Mara. <laughs> Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. Thank you. People don't usually use my full name like that. I know. What a surprise to find out there's more than one Rooney. It's odd, right? <laughs> I, I want to dig into where that all came from. But I'll tell you this. I looked high and low, um, deep into the fiery pits of uh, Google, looking for some juicy gossip or deep, dark secrets about you, and I found nothing. Snooze. <laughs> yeah, it was awful. So either uh, what you see is what you get, or you have an amazing PR and legal team. Uh, one or the other. Um, you're insanely pregnant right now, and you might pop at any minute. And um, honestly, I really enjoy getting to know you, and I think that you're really refreshing down-to-earth, candid, big-hearted, and lightning fast with your observations, which makes you very funny. So, Well, geez, what a, that's, that's quite an intro. No pressure. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you're also lightning fast with email. <clears throat> that is true. I will, I will accept that. I sometimes, when I'm emailing you, <laughs> feel the pressure. <laughs> like they'll be like, "Hey, your mother's on the phone." I'm like, "Hold on, I gotta." That's the idea. <laughs> I gotta email. Look, I just hit the table. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Sorry, Glenn. Uh, all right, let's get started. I want to talk about where you came from, your beginnings, how you mastered the acting thing, uh, romance, pregnancy, and your imminent birth. Let's do it. Okay, starting about where you came from. Where'd you come from? Um, I grew up in Bedford, New York. Where's that? It's in Westchester. It's about an hour north of New York City. Did you have a New York? kind of thing growing no, up? No, because Bedford, no. Bedford's the suburbs. It's not New York. The burbs don't talk like no. that. Yeah. How I was growing up wish. in Bedford? Um, I, like a storybook. It, you're surrounded by horses and farms. and oh. Yeah. I love it. My, my family, my parents still have the house that we grew up in there, and we go back all the time. Oh, that's so cool. I love it. Yeah. And you have siblings. I've got three siblings. I have a massive family. I'm one of four, but my mom is one of five, and my dad is one of 11. Oh, my goodness. So there's endless Maras. That doesn't really happen anymore. No, it's ra- Yeah, it's very rare. Wow. So you have tons of cousins. <laughs> I don't know, like, half of their names. You don't know? Do you, Have you met them all? I've al- Almost all of them, but there's so many b- new babies. Everyone's always oh, having everyone's babies. everyone's having kids. Yeah. yeah. So I think w- out of the 10 aunts and uncles that I do have... Um, all of them have at, at least two kids, but but two would be a small number. So um, it's mental. They didn't take home. after their parents having like the big brood. No, I think the most is maybe five. Okay, so my wife has two aunts that both have one has like eleven and one has thirteen kids, and they all their kids are all getting married now and having five, six, seven, eight, nine kids. And I'm face blind, so when I go to these family <laughs> events, I don't even know if I'm related. Oh, that's horrible. And they all have at least two Hebrew names. And I'm like, I will fail the test. Just hi. Just to, no, that's bad. Tell yeah. me you're related. Everyone should be required to wear name tags. I, I like it. And I think they should be on your forehead. <laughs> for you, that so, would yes, be ideal. It would be very nice for me. <laughs> in, in general, by law. No driver's <laughs> license. Name right here. Uh, all right. And uh, so you have two brothers and one sister. Mm-hmm. Which Which one are you? I'm number two of the four. We all, my parents basically popped us out every two years. Oh, really? That's Not like even. my kids. Yeah. 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 My brother, and then I was about a year and a half later. And then my sister was two years after me, and then our brother was two years after her. So you're the, you're the original middle child. Yeah. Do you have middle child stuff? Um, I think that I'm the easiest child. <laughs> really? I mean, I don't know if for sure. That's usually sure. the last one. Well, my brother is the youngest, Connor, and he's pretty easygoing, but he's the baby. Yeah. Like, forever. He's, like, 6'2", and I, <laughs> and I call him my little my brother. Baby brother. But yeah. Um, and he's, I think, 30 now, 31, and forever he'll be my little brother. Oh, that's sweet. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure if my parents would describe me as the middle child, having, like, the middle child syndrome. You're mellow. Yeah. Are, you, are all four of you close? We're really close. I mean, my sister and I both live in Los Angeles and have lived here for, I think I've lived here for, um, I don't know, 14 years now or something crazy. And she's lived here for almost as long. So 
we don't get to see our you know our brothers as much as we would like because they're back in New York mm. with the rest of the family. But we're yeah we're a really close family. Maybe now with the kid popping out, people just flock. I all know, over. but my my older brother, who's a year and a half older than me, has four kids. Oh wow, you got work to do. I know. Mm. He started really young. Okay, you can have multiples. Yeah. There's yeah, no lots problem. Of ways to catch up. <laughs> no problem. Um, talk about sports. Your family's a big sports family. Yeah, and the, and the draft is right now. The NFL draft Ooh. is right now, which is a really big deal. Um, my great-grandparents, my great-grandpa on the Maris side of my family founded the New York Giants, and my great-grandpa on my mom's side of my family founded the Pittsburgh Steelers, and mm. then my parents met and got married, and so me and my siblings have, technically speaking, two football teams that we have to Like family love. teams, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very odd. I don't know anything about football. Do they like compete against each other? No, the, that is the night. The nice thing is they rare, the Giants and the Steelers rarely play each other. Oh, that's so nice. you can just love them both and be happy, you know. And when they do play each other, it's it's you win. <laughs> either way, yeah. But you lose either way. I mean, you're very. I don't optimistic. look at it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a dark. But now, now I will. I'm a dark force. <laughs> um, wait a second. So, do you go to a lot of games? I when I'm in New York I do and um and when I lived in New York I would go to every game. Like growing up we went to every single home game. We would go to church and then we would drive in our very family. Like we weren't allowed to wear um when my grandparents were alive, we were not allowed to wear jeans or anything. We, it was it was a oh, business. It was, formal? It was like an yeah. outing. Oh, it was business for the family. Yeah. Which you, I kind of love. You see people on the sidelines like in suits and stuff. Yeah, I mean sporting events, you wear jerseys, you wear like hats usually and I think you get like mustard pretzel on. <laughs> yeah, well pretzel mustard. Wait. Yeah. I love mustard. Mm, I love pretzel. Uh, pretzels are good too. <laughs> <laughs> um but that that shift eventually that shifted, but at the beginning it was like, you know, you wear a dress or a nice suit situation to the, to the Giants game, which is bizarre if you're just a Giants fan. Yeah, then yeah. you don't even wear your nicest NASCAR shirt. You just wear <laughs> one more, you know. Um, did the sporting bring your parents together, or is it just random happenstance? Well, they ended up at the same college. They went to Boston College. But they had met each other at um, owner's meetings where their parents were. Oh, yeah, so the connection yeah. came through football. Yeah. Well, I, have, uh, I have football NFL players who come – it's a weird oh, mix. Yeah. I see like pregnant mommies and NFL players. Well, we're really similar. <laughs> You're similar, but the the pregnant mommies always like more pressure, more pressure, and the football players always, eh, that's a little deep, man. Really? Yeah. Well, but maybe you are. Are you tougher on them? I don't think so. I huh? um, they're just I, pregnant it. mommies are super tough. Yeah, we are. Uh, always like the little like little oh yeah if I don't hear a crack you're <laughs> not doing your job <laughs> but even during the massage you're like deeper deeper and the wow. and the guys are like hey not so deep man I'm like hey I was just warming up <laughs> you know putting in motion <laughs> oh my but they're God. T- like they're massaging concrete though I mean you could teach anatomy on on the, especially those little guys their muscles are so mm-hmm. defined yeah it's uh, no it's a sport I I mean I'm I guess I'm biased but I. Really don't have to love it. You know, it's something that I grew up, I grew up having to go to the games, but I loved going to the games because it was a family reunion every Sunday. And then as I got older and really started to understand the game and understand the sport and, you know, sort of like what it does for family and um, community, you know, it brings people together and, um, and also just learning about the players and all of that and the talent it takes. I, I actually became a real fan eventually. So to me, it's it's a fascinating thing, and I'm really, I'm really into it. Um, it's not like a chore to me. Do you go to games now that LA has teams? I haven't been to the stadium. Well, because the Giants haven't played here yet. Oh. Or the Steelers. Coming soon? I hope so. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know how all that works. It seems confusing. It is. Um, all right. Let's talk about acting. When did you think about starting to do that? Um, I was super young. I was, I think I was about nine when I realized my, my mom is very, um, she loves films and musicals and, um, she brought me and my siblings up showing us, you know, super old, old movies, mostly musicals, but also just black and white movies. We grew up on that. Hmm. Um, so my sister and I have a love of, I think one of the first movies I remember seeing, which... Now, if I look back on it, it's kind of it's kind of intense. It's called Lady Jane, and Helena Bonham Carter plays Lady Jane, and she 
and gets her head chopped off. Oh. Um, definitely not a kid's movie, but a beautiful black and white movie. And she was a very young actress at the time. Um, she's still one of my favorites today. But I remember thinking, how can I do that for oh, really? forever, like, like you for a job? You movies and you thought at age eight, nine? I think that's when I realized that you could. I still thought the actors were in the box at that age. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how did they get in there in everybody's yeah. house? Well, yeah. it's. Uh, I mean, it is kind of crazy. It is. Uh, but you th- you said, I want to do that. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, yeah. And, and we just sort of, we went to a lot of, cause, because we live so close to New York City, we went into the city a lot and saw Broadway shows. Broadway, yeah. Uh, and that's, I think that's what really excited me the most, the live theater aspect of it. They have people talk like that. They, absolutely. That's very good. I'm from New York. Oh, yeah, of course. I grew up like that. <laughs> uh, so did you, like, eight and nine, you start? I started doing community, really bad community theater, like around Westchester. Terrible. I so mean, do my you poor train parents. in community theater or it's just like you no. audition and go? Yeah, you just sort of, yeah, there's no, it's really not class. I mean, I, I'm sure, I, I did I did drama class as a probably eight-year-old, you know, but they're just teaching you how to stand on a stage and remember lines. Even that was not real class. The training really was just doing a bunch of shows and sort of getting the fear out of your system. Um, did you have fear? I was a really, really shy child, like painfully shy. Hard to see um, that. You think? Yeah. Yeah, now I know I grew out of it. Yeah, I know. But I it was mean, for literally it was forced out of me from the audition process cuz you know, people people want to talk to you in auditions a lot of times. Mm. They don't want you to just come in and read the scene, which for a while that's all I wanted to do. I did not want to talk to anybody. Yeah, cuz I was really shy also as a kid. I think also because I was face blind but didn't know it. Like I never yeah. knew who knew me, so I'm always like a um, oh, That's terrifying. I don't want to talk to you cuz I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm like, "Oh, it's dad." But the other thing oh is <laughs> That is so fascinating. <laughs> I guess I'll talk to you. Um, I was a drama major, but I really liked acting because I could be somebody else. Yeah, you're just hiding behind a... a yeah, and if yeah. that person doesn't have to be shy, they can be whoever they want to be. Mm-hmm. So I loved acting, but then when it was over, I just like run out of the theater. Yeah. Not yeah, see. no, I relate to that completely. No pictures. No, no pictures still. Yeah. No. Um, so how'd you go from bad community theater to awesome actress? Um. We had um, a person move in next door to us in Bedford, um, Carol King's daughter. Her name was Sherry Condor at the time, and she was making a children's album um, with oldies music, with kids singing the oldies songs. Okay. And so we heard about the audition. I was nine. We heard about the audition. Um, She wanted little kids who could sing a little bit. And so I auditioned, and um, I think I had to sing. What did I have to sing? Some oldies song, ABC maybe. Like the ABCs? No, like like Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, how kids is yeah, this? Yeah, I mean, nine is pretty young. So. Yeah. But I got one of the slots of, I was one of the kid singers in this album. We were called The Sugar Beats. And um, I would just walk across the street a few days a week and we would record these oldies songs. Carol King came in a few times and so cool. sang some. Yeah, she sang some songs with us, and then that's kind of how it all started. Did you have singing background before that? Um, no, that was sort of because uh, singing I, is a whole other talent than acting. It is. It, it was more like I was doing the bad community theater singing in that. But as a nine-year-old, you don't really most nine-year-olds. I don't think train that young um but but being in the being in the sugar beets yeah (laughs) i i met a bunch of other sort of broadway kids and they had experience and so that's how i sort of learned oh i better get a singing coach and i better get an agent whatever that is so you did all that at nine well no it took me to when i was 14 that's when i realized i needed to find an agent i feel like we should play right here a little clip of that sugar beets (laughs) sugar beets go for it all right you can find what you can find a, a great clip of What's my husband's favorite? Oh, Walk Like an Egyptian. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can dance to that one. Nobody's oh, looking. yeah. Great. All the old paintings on the tomb They do the sand dance, don't you know? If they move too quick They're falling down like the domino All the bazaar men by the now They got the money on a bed Gold crocodiles They snap their teeth on your fingertip For a tight with the soda pop set
<laughs> uh, all right. So that's a nice break. Do you still sing? Um, not really, no. I mean, I would like to do um, more animated movies and shows and stuff and sing that way. Mm-hmm. Sort of hidden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that Yeah, that excites me. Oh, I'm so curious about your singing voice now. Um, when did you take it to the next level and how? Um, when, I, when I was about 14, I, I had been doing plays and things, you know, since I was nine. And, um, and I heard through a friend who had an agent and she had been on Broadway, this 13-year-old girl. Um, I asked my mom to ask her mom for her agent's address so I could send her. Because back then, there, you know, you weren't emailing people. We just sent her a tape of me singing and a picture, and we sent it in the regular mail, <laughs> which is like, again, today, Archaic. can you imagine? Yeah. yeah. Um, and it worked. And I signed with a manager and an agent, and, and I started auditioning and doing movies. For th- and oh, not, not no, just theater. Didn't you do moved away from theater. Yeah. The agents and the managers were like, yeah, you don't need to do theater. <laughs> you don't need to. It's like a stepping stone. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and you were doing uh, TV in New York? Yeah, I was doing, you know, basically every Law & Order you can think of. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so a lot of independent films and things like that. But I did this movie called Random Hearts when I was, I think I was 14, with Harrison Ford, and that was kind of my first big movie that I did. I think he still talks about how that was his lucky <laughs> big break. I mean, I don't blame him. Kate Mara was 14. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was his first big role. <laughs> uh, it's so funny because when I was little, I remember asking my mom to ask my friend's mom for her chocolate chip cookie recipe. Did it work? It worked. Oh, it took well, a while. how were the cookies? Amazing. We still make them. I used to write my mom because I was, again, I was so shy, even sort of asking my parents questions. I used to write my mom notes. I would leave them on her pillow every night. And I was severely dyslexic. So things would be sort of like upside down and backwards written. Mm. And it would say, you know, mom, I've been thinking like, I really, I really think it's time for me to get an agent. Everything misspelled, terrible <laughs> grammar, um, and I think it, it wore her down after about it's like a year. Like the Unabomber, <laughs> <laughs> totally. but not she on purpose. She saved a bunch of the notes, and they're scary. Uh, wait, are you still dyslexic? I no, I somehow grew you out, of it. out of it. Yeah. I had a tutor every day. It was, oh, that's helpful. It was a lot of work, but I just feel like, in retrospect, I should I should have asked for something bigger than the cookie recipe. Yeah, I think so. All right, if I come back. <laughs> um, oh my goodness, let's take a little break. We're going to be right back with Kate Mara. Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. We are talking to Kate Mara, not Mara. Absolutely. (laughs) All right. So just to finish the acting gig, did you come to L.A. because of work or to find work or because you got work? Yeah, I came to L.A. when I was um, 19 after years of uh, my agents and my manager at the time just saying, if you really want to work, if you want to work more, in the movie world and TV world, for that matter, you just have to go to L.A. And I put it off forever because I didn't really want to be far away from my family. I'm, the Giants games. And I, <laughs> the Giants games, yeah. yeah. Um, and I love New York. But when I moved here when I was 19, because I realized, it, I mean, it was a joke in comparison. How many more oh, meetings? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it was like auditioning was like a full-time job. At what point did you find yourself uh, growing out of the shyness? Um, I remember moving to L.A. and being told from my agents that I had to (laughs) that I basically had to change whatever my tactic was, which I had none, um, (laughs) which was probably part of the problem. But whatever my tactic was going into auditions and and reading, I had to change it because the note kept coming back of, you know, she was she did a good job, but she's so cold and like she's not she didn't really engage with us. and, Mm. And I just was like, well. Why do they want me to engage with them? I'm playing like a... Somebody else. You know, or if I was going in to play a serial killer, why would I go in all chipper and then have to be... Oh, so you start getting into character before you yeah. get there? And then I learned that that wasn't working. So you have to come with a big knife and engage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in costume. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it actually took a lot of effort, but things did start shifting. Did you actively work on it? Did you read things or listen to things? 
that help you become more No, I just kept saying to myself like be be extra friendly, be extra <laughs> outgoing, like pretend you're somebody else. In your head. Yeah. I would have to because sort of you're pretend an actor, I was so you can there. do that. Yeah, but then eventually you just grow into it. I think also just confidence makes you less shy, you know. Mm-hmm. So the more I worked, the more confident I felt in a room going in. So that helped for sure. Is it weird as you continue to grow into a more public uh, view that people know you, but you've never met them? Well, I was thinking that you must feel that I have that every day, all the time, which is terrifying. With like my kids, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I mean, it's I can't. Weird. I can't, um, yeah, I can't imagine that. Because I get, I have that same fear when someone, I always assume I know somebody who's who's coming up to me to say hello. I'm like, oh, it must be somebody from, you know, from Bedford or from, from school, school or, or whatever. Or yeah. yeah, so I better act like I know them. And then, yeah, and then the shift happens where you're like, oh, I don't know this. This is a stranger. Right, it's you just, you saw something I was in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then if you fake it, then it's even worse because oh, yeah. they're like, why did she pretend like she knows me? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I, it's just awful. You know what? I w- interviewed somebody about twins. Um, she's like a twins coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's an episode here. Uh, it's something about twins. Anyway, so <laughs> <laughs> um, Sue Darrison is her name, and she does twins, mommy, and me stuff. But she said like when the twins come out, uh, identical twins, They're so similar to each other that the parents can't tell them apart right away. Uh And so, like, oftentimes they'll do something like paint toenails on one of them but not the other one. And I'm like, that's so cool. If I could just paint everybody's, like, one toenail a different color, fingernail, something, then I could tell people apart. Well, yeah, you could do that at least with your family. Yeah, it would be nice. In my house, I can tell my family apart. It's just on the street. If they're not wearing clothing, I know, and I'm not expecting to see them, they could literally walk right by me and I'd have no idea. Have they ever? I wonder if any of them have ever. Not yet, but they do have, like, that diabolical, let's play (laughs) uh, this awful trick on dad situation. Yeah. Oh, fascinating. I take a kid with me when I go pick my mom up at the airport. Smart. And they have done this, like, to test me. They'll be like, oh, there's grandma. She's right over there. And I'll go out and be like, (laughs) mom. And she'll look at me terrified and run away. And like, I was just kidding. I wasn't sure if it was. Oh, it's evil. They test me. Yeah. And then, yeah. So they do stuff like that. Oh, my God. That's love, though. Because they can. Yeah, it's family. Yeah. They have my sense of humor. (laughs) All right, and then you come here and, and like, you you killed it. You're in all these big uh, movies and TV shows. All things I've seen, by the way, and still had no idea I that I had that. seen you when I met you. <laughs> <laughs> you in fact, you I think you had seen my latest movie. You had watched it, like, the night before. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I love so it. So randomly. We're just sitting in the room like, what do you guys want to watch? Yeah. And, you know, with six people, it's it, you never find the I know. one thing that everybody wants, it happened to be Fantastic Four. What a coincidence. Four. So strange. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, and then like halfway, forgettable, but. I, yeah, the whole first visit, I had no idea that, <laughs> that you were Sue. I love it. Um, and through that, I found out that I knew the other Sue Storm. That is odd. And I had seen that one also and didn't realize and it was her. forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Look at that. I wonder who will be Sue Storm in the next one. Oh, God. Someone will be. You met your husband. Well, no, we didn't meet on Fantastic you Four. You didn't? No, but I do credit Fantastic Four for bringing us together, I guess. You met before that? Yeah, we met about 13 years ago. Mm-hmm. We had to do a screen test together for a movie that neither of us got, but we had to kiss. And I told my mom that day, because I had to... Some, it's very odd, but sometimes you have to screen test with multiple people. Oh. And that day, I had to kiss about four other people. Oh, wow. And... Um, yeah, poor me. <laughs> yeah, what I'm just saying, this shy girl. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but I went home and my mom was like, how was everybody? Tell me who was the best. And I said, well, Jamie Bell was the best actor and the best kisser. Oh. Cut to. Kiss and tell. Kiss and tell. I did. I did. I told my mother that, which is <laughs> odd. I never thought we'd get married. You didn't write her a little note that she could barely <laughs> cryptically read? Oh, God. well, at that point, I think I could write appropriately. You can write better. And now yeah. you talk. You talk, so. That's true. Just yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have to leave her notes on her pillow anymore. <laughs> but anyway, we met then and then, you know, we would see each other over the years and uh and then we ended up both being cast in Fantastic Four and randomly. It, well, yeah, totally randomly. But the movie was a disaster. It was a disaster to make and then and then everybody hated it. But because people hated it, the press tour for it was really very bonding for us and for the other two guys. Because, it was like you versus the world. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and that's when we fell in love. Aww. And we were like, oh, we better get married. Well, that was a long time ago. Four years ago, yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. 
Um, my family liked it. Oh my gosh! Well, you know what though? It it is every once in a while someone will say, "I actually enjoyed the movie." I really don't care one way or another. I did. I mean, I found the love of my life, and oh, you know so it was a mean? good movie for so you. So for me, it's great. But I was surprised when you said it wasn't received well because it, it didn't seem like a bad movie to me. It got really bad reviews. I wonder why though. Do you know why? You just, you you don't think it was a great movie, so <laughs> yeah, I can't, yeah. I probably shouldn't say why I thought, oh. but um, I mean, no, I don't know. I'll think okay. a lot of reasons. Okay, well, we enjoyed it. I'm glad. Some of us. Enjoyed it. <laughs> well, you don't get them to agree. Nobody ever agrees on that. No, anything. of course. They not. only agree. If you have everybody... four kids. Yeah, four yeah, kids. Yeah. So is it what is it? Like usually two of them hate it and two of them love it, or one of them loves something? And well, there's else. one. If she didn't pick it, she'll hate it no matter how good it is. I love that. Yeah, she's the one that makes the lemonade. Oh my god, I love her lemonade. Oh, this is the mojito flavor you. I'm drinking. Yeah, mojito lemonade. Uh, after pregnancy, you can she's drink that. She's got great taste. Oh, thank you. That's my favorite of her lemonades. Um, but after pregnancy, you could drink that in a whole new way. What do you mean? With uh, rum in it. Oh, oh yeah. my God. That's how far from my mind it is. <laughs> I'm like, what you, what's a mojito? <laughs> I'll make sure to come visit you after yeah. and bring some lemonade. Um, the first time you did romance, like kissing on camera, was that weird? Or like uh, somebody Yeah, was... my first kiss was on camera. Did you know? Oh, so you knew it was coming. It yes. was on camera. There was no like practice? No. Ooh. Yeah, I was 14. Is 14? that old? <laughs> I just all I of a know. sudden realized. Oh, it was your first kiss. Yeah. And it was on camera with somebody. Some 15-year-old boy, yeah. Oh, how awful. I was so terrified. Now I'm remembering. It was terrifying. Because I was like, I don't know how to kiss somebody. Yeah, and th- they probably don't even have Listerine strips yet. No. No, I think I had like a bagel with cream cheese like, right before. <laughs> Toasted onion. <laughs> this way he'll never come and back. And my mom was there because obviously I was 14. Oh, watching your... Yeah. Uh, oh, that's oh, God. Oh, my God. My, my palms are getting sweaty thinking about oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, but... I, I was mean, hoping to make you uncomfortable at least once. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, um, but, yeah. uh, but like now that you're married... Is oh, it, I see what you're saying. No, this is just a separate question. Mm-hmm. Now that you're married, is it weird, you know, having romance with other people? Yeah, I mean, I think it's always weird when when you have to do it is always weird when you have to do that. I'm not one of those actors who's like, "Oh yeah, but it's just like, you know, it's part of the job. It's no big deal when I see my husband having to make out with, you know, it doesn't matter who." Yeah. I get really um even though I understand, I still I'm like, I'm human. Who right. would want that? Well, maybe, maybe some people would to keep it interesting. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I get like, uh, I'm like, ugh, just, I wish you would just make animated movies. There you go. Oh, and you wouldn't go. have to scenes. deal with it. Exactly. You're really <laughs> but yeah, going it's, for animated. it's definitely odd for both of us. I mean, I don't know if it affects him as much as it affects me, but yeah. I'm like, but it affects you in both ways when he's romantic with somebody mm-hmm. else on camera and when you're and romantic. And if I have to be, I'm like, oh, this feels so strange. Yeah. Yeah. I think because people have told me that before, like, oh, it's just work, you know? I'm like, but we're all human. I mean, it's it's definitely it is just work, and it's very. I mean, there's like 30 people in the room when it's happening. It's not romantic at all. Right. But you still don't want the person that you're madly in love with, you know, making out with Lip somebody block else. With some yeah. other person yeah makes sense to me all right so you guys bonded over this horrible press tour and then um, (laughs) (laughs) and then it picked up from there yeah well so it was like the worst slash best press tour ever because we were being just like slaughtered in the pre in the reviews and everything and and yet we were we were falling in love and then um yeah i mean we knew super early on that we would just be together forever and that we wanted to get married. And he already had a son Mm -hmm. at the time who was, I guess he was one and a half then. So I already knew what kind of father he was, which is... Oh, that's pretty nice that you had that foresight. Yeah, I mean, bonus, because you just, you already know what you're signing up for. And he's an amazing dad. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. And I mean, when you say we knew then that we wanted to be together forever, it's just very powerful. Like, it still feels so powerful. Yeah, it was very, it was, it's odd, though, because we knew each other for so long. And we were, you know, we had only really been friends, like actual friends for a year since the movie, since we had made the movie and gotten to know each other. But to know somebody for that long and to never think, you know, "Hmm, maybe that would happen. it, It really never, we both had these sort of blinders up also we were both in other relationships and other things were going on over the years so timing just i think worked out amazingly when did you get married how soon after that 
Um, we got married two years later, Ooh. was it? We got engaged a year later and then married a year later. So, yeah. And then how soon till you said, let's have a kid? Not even a year later. So we got married. We had been together for two years. And then about seven months later, we had kind of planned it that way because we both knew we wanted more kids. And I was and I said, I don't want to get pregnant right away. I want to I want to sort of enjoy the like the newlywed aspect of this portion of our lives. Yeah. Um, which you can't really do necessarily when you already have a child. Right, you already had one. Yeah, even though he's my stepkid, you, you, we, we were already parents. So. But it's also different than being pregnant and giving birth and, you know. Totally. And and you jumped in the scene when he was already a year and a half, and mm-hmm. it's like sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not there. Yeah, so we did. We had our moments of being sort of. Newlyweds. Yeah, newlyweds. Without a kid. Mm-hmm. And then when the seven months were up, we kind of had a timeline a loose timeline because I'm not, you know, I didn't want to plan it too much because I also thought to myself, you know, who knows how long it'll take to get pregnant. I have no idea. I also had been on birth control forever. So I, in my mind, I thought it was going to take us a really long time. Did it take you a really long time? No. Oh. <laughs> it was the, literally the first time we tried. Oh, I thought you were going to say just 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just two minutes. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. So you got pregnant right away. Yeah. And um, we got pregnant right away, which was a surprise. How did you um, find out? Oh, we had this terrible night's sleep. For some reason, our my my stepson just was waking up every few hours, and it, he was five at the time, right? Yeah, he was five at the time, so there was no reason for him to be waking up like a newborn. But it was so weird. We were having this night where it was as if we had a newborn in the house, mm. and we so neither of us really got any sleep. And the next morning was sort of our anniversary of when we sort of like fell in love. And so we had planned this brunch thing together. Or my husband had planned it. And um, neither of us had slept at all. And I had these weird dreams that I was pregnant. And so I thought to myself, I'm probably just dreaming that because we have a kid in the house who keeps waking up and whatever. But maybe not. Maybe I actually am. Maybe I'm kind of witchy. So I took a test and... And I, I was surprise. I was, yeah, I was. So sub- I was shocked, um, but I didn't take another one. I was just like, nope, that says it. That says it is. It was clear. Yeah, it was very clear. People do. They take like. Seven. I know. They buy them from different stores. Different. Brands. I never thought to do that. Oh. I was just like, no, that says well, yeah, it. Like, you're pretty down to earth. I mean, yeah, I trusted it. Yeah, I trusted the the stick. <laughs> the stick. <laughs> Believe in the stick. Did you tell Jamie right away? No, because he was still sleeping, oh. <laughs> and I had to drop my kid off at school. And so I thought, oh, I'll be romantic. I'll let him sleep a little longer, and I'll drop, <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop the kid off, and then I'll come home and I'll wake him up with the with the stick. Oh, the stick! And then that didn't work. No. No, I got home and he was in the car waiting for me. He was like, "Come on, we got a reservation to get to." So. Oh, for your for, for our anniversary, anniversary thing. Yeah. So, so you I, couldn't tell him yet. No. So I told him in the car, oh. as he said to me, as we're driving down the hill to go to the restaurant, he said, what did he say? He was like, oh, it's like it's like we have a newborn or something. It's absolute hell. And I turned to oh, him and I said, of the night. yeah, because of our horrible night's sleep. And I turned to him and I was like, is now a bad time to show you this? <laughs> and I showed him the stick. He was like at a stoplight. And he just burst out laughing and was like, oh, my God, oh, okay. how is that possible? That's a good thing it was a stoplight. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it was sweet. Uh, okay, that is not this pregnancy. No, anymore. that was our, yeah, that I miscarried yeah. pretty early on with that one. Oh. But that was, a you know, even so, even though we miscarried with that baby, because it was the first time I've ever been pregnant and I've ever had that sort of excitement and sort of shock of being a you know an almost mom, yeah. Um, that just was such a special sort of reveal, you know, the way we found that out. It just will forever be sort of embedded in my mind because then of afterwards, course. when it, when you find out the next time, you're the fear is all there, right? Because then you're like, well, it's stick. Is it going to happen again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How far along were you when the miscarriage happened? I was about eight weeks when I went in to get the first ultrasound, mm-hmm. and. Uh, she couldn't see the what is it considered an embryo then? Yeah, she couldn't see the embryo, but she could see the pregnancy sac. Uh, my doctor at the time said, "You know, maybe you're off with your timing." And I was like, "I'm so good with timing." Like, she said, "Even if you think you're a week more pregnant than you are, oh, maybe we just don't hear don't the heart or see it yet." Yeah. 
So she wanted to do some blood tests and sort of wait a week to see if... It was going to still mm-hmm. develop. Um, and I was just... I, but you already knew. Yeah, I knew that there was no way that was possible. But, you know, you've got that tiny hint of hope. Right. Um, so we took some blood tests and we had to wait, of course, because this is what always happens to people. It was like a holiday weekend. Oh, no. so So you had to wait. I had to wait an extra like four days to get the results back, which was just torture. And then when the results came back, the numbers, uh, and I don't really know all the terminology, but the numbers were going up, which meant, oh, you're probably pregnant, but they weren't doubling as they were supposed to. So she said, there's clearly something off or wrong. So why don't you come back in and we'll see what we can see. So I think the next day we went back in and she said I had clearly had a blighted ovum, which I didn't know what that was at the time, but... I've learned what that is. Mm -hmm. Um, So she said, you've got to basically you've miscarried, but it just hasn't left your body yet. So we've got a few options. You can wait it out. And I thought, well, what does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to wait a couple of days and and I'm going to miscarry naturally or? You never know. And she said, no, it could be like months. Yeah. Which to me sounded like absolute torture. Yeah. And your body still thinks it's pregnant. So, But you don't have to. No, so I, but I really like, I like being natural. Yeah. So I would have loved to have done the natural version of that. But the thought of still having the feelings of pregnancy and all of that was just torture to us. So, and then she said, or you can get a DNC or you can do the pill version, which is 98% effective, I think she said. Mm. And I was like, that sounds pretty good. And it's not surgery. Great. Then we had to wait a few more days. The waiting was the worst part. Just for something to happen? You were just waiting for Yeah, the- you're just because then, yeah, everything just took so much time. So by the time it was all over, I mean, I had been pregnant for, I don't know, like three months or something, really even dry. though I wasn't really pregnant. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it just tricky. dragged out forever. Yeah. But the pill, the pill version didn't work for us. Oh, you're the 2%. That doesn't surprise me either. No. You seem like a 2%er. <laughs> that's, what I, <laughs> that's what I said. I was like, oh my gosh, that is... Either really unlucky or, you know, think of it as you're special. <laughs> yeah, buy a Powerball. See what happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I should have done that. You're the one in 292 million. Oh, my God. That number is insane. It is insane. But even – I only buy a ticket if it goes over like three, 400 million. Well. But then when I buy it, I'm pretty sure I won. <laughs> oh, really? Every time? You're Every like, time. I'm like, it. okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then I lose. And I'm like, what happened? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? I think that's the definition of insanity. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, oy. Well, I'm I'm really sorry I had that experience. Oh, um, yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, I know you guys went through. Yeah, we had some too. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, I don't know, it's never easy. I mean, especially if you're excited and you want to have the baby. Uh, yeah, and I just had never, I hadn't taught, because there's so many babies in my family, so many, hundreds. constantly, yeah. <laughs> hundreds. <laughs> um, and I guess people just, I, I'm just, there's, I'm sure there's been multiple, so many in my family as well that I just didn't know about. Um, but my mom had never had that experience. So I, you know, I just didn't have anyone close to me that I knew had experienced it before. So Did it felt shocking. Did they never have one or they never talk about it? Um, well, no. Then, it, then it, as soon as I started sharing with friends, I had all these friends who had m- multiple experiences and who have many children, healthy children. So it makes you feel obviously less alone and and sort of um, less broken. Like, yeah, you feel like, what's wrong with me? What did this happen to me? Yeah. But you're, it, in that case, you're not the two percent. Right. You're like the majority. If you have a bunch of kids, you probably have a miscarriage somewhere along the way. I know. Be nice for someone to say that, like when you're twelve. It's a bummer that it's not. You know, the movie version of getting pregnant is not at all reality because. You know, in the fantasy version, it's just like, well, you try and you either get pregnant or you don't. It's not you get pregnant and you get excited and you, you know, want to share it with people, but like you're going to wait. But really, you have to wait because because, maybe. Yeah. And then it does if it, you know, for us, because it happened the very first try, I was just so hesitant the next time I got pregnant, which was, again, really quick, which was great. We got pregnant again very quickly, but I was so we, we were minute? both so nervous. <laughs> yeah, well, this one took one minute, <laughs> thirty seconds. Um, <laughs> but you were, we were so nervous. I was so nervous that it was going to happen again. You know, you didn't tell so it anything. kind of like it just ruins the excitement because you're like, I shouldn't be too excited. Yeah, 
I don't remember feeling that. Yeah. I, we felt that way in our first one until like three months after he was born. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he's still there, right? You oh, know? my God. Anyway, let's take another quick break, and we will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Informed Pregnancy Podcast. We're talking to Kate Mara. All right, let's talk about this pregnancy. Yeah, let's. All right, how'd you find out this time? I gotta remember. Uh, <laughs> feels like a long time ago now. Ages. Uh, yeah, it was. It was kind of a similar. I, it was a couple days before I was supposed to get my period, and we had tried one more time. Right after, so you have to wait um, after you have a miscarriage. You know this, but maybe some people don't. But you have to wait a certain amount of time, or you're supposed to, to try to get pregnant again because um, they want to make sure there's no scar tissue or whatever so that it'll be easier to get pregnant. And so we waited the amount of time you're supposed to wait. And then I did the old ovulation uh, tester. Oh, you started tracking your... I did that with the first one, too, because a friend of mine was like, if you really want to get pregnant, just do the test because it's so fun. It's like it's almost like you're taking a pregnancy test before you're taking a pregnancy test, mm. which is what I felt. It was kind of fun to do to the whole see like, that you're peeking. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh my god. Um, Maybe that's why you get pregnant the first yeah, time. Yeah, probably because I followed the come home now the rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it was. I think it was two days before I was supposed to get my period, and um, and I had a weird dream again, and. Um, Woke up at like 6 a.m. and thought my husband was asleep. <laughs> There's a pattern here. <laughs> and my stepson was not asleep. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so I fed him and then I, t- and then I hid in the bathroom and took a test. And I found out that I was. And, uh, but because it was the second time around, I was definitely excited for sure. But there was this sort of a, this fear element as well, which is still to me very sad that that's yeah. what we have to feel. Well, you don't have to feel it, but it's what I felt. Um, so I waited for my husband to wake up and I, and sort of just showed it to him really unromantically, but we also had to be quiet about it because, oh, your son was yeah, we didn't want my stepson to know yet. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we like were quietly excited and also both clearly very scared, which was an interesting sort of combination. Did you talk about it? Yeah, we talked, yeah, we talked about it. Later that day when the kid wasn't around. They were um, both nervous? <laughs> yeah, it was just this feeling of... Uh, Let's not rejoice too much. Yeah. Yeah, w- and it was kind of... Sa- it was weird as this bittersweet sort of... I was so excited but also sad that we weren't as excited as we were the first time because mm-hmm. that was clear that it was a very different dynamic, you know? Yeah. Um, but it makes it makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, now it's like you're protecting yourself from... Completely. ...getting attached. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you miss out on getting attached. I know. It's tough. That's yeah. That's our human brains. Yeah. Uh, but it was all good because it stuck. Was it eight weeks before you went to get the thing again? Um, I forget. I think she. I think maybe she wanted us to come in earlier because we had had the miscarriage before, so she wanted us to come and get our levels or my levels checked. Oh, blood don't Yeah, ultrasound? blood. Mm-hmm. Which I was happy about because I thought, oh, good. At least I'll know kind of like earlier. Right. And so, yeah, I did that. and. Um, but no ultrasound on that visit? Um, no. The first time I went in, it was just blood. And your blood was good. Mm-hmm. And then the... The ultrasound. The ultrasound, we, yeah, we could I can see. almost feel the nervousness going into the ultrasound. <laughs> totally. Yeah, like, oh, please yeah. be there, please be there. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is not fun. You want the ultrasound to be this exciting thing, I'm but I was like, yeah, yeah, no. And it's like, please be there. Mm-hmm. But it was um, there. But it was good. It was, yeah, it was, it was there, and it was all good. Do you know what you're having? Did you tell? Did you reveal? Yeah, we're having, well, we didn't, did we, actually, I have a great, I didn't reveal, but oh. I did this, um, interview this very unexpected interview with my hero jane goodall oh and yeah. she i i just guess recently. yeah just recently and i i had uh we had been talking before the interview started just to sort of get to know each other a little bit and she asked me about the baby and i told her it was a girl and i was so excited that it was a girl because you know she, jane is my hero and I was like, I can't wait to teach my daughter about you because I've I've already taught my stepson about you. But there's something about a woman having a female role model. And so during our sort of live Facebook chat, it was like a long it was a long live Facebook chat. She mentioned that I'm having a girl, which 
who cares? I mean, it actually doesn't bother me at all, but it was funny because I oh, thought... Oh, you had an announcement. <laughs> no, like I, I, I wasn't <laughs> going to, but I thought, oh, I love that. I love that Jane Goodall just said it because... Um, because she's my hero, and yeah. If, yeah, if anyone's gonna say something that maybe you didn't want it out there for whatever reason, she's <laughs> she's kind of the person. I mean, I hope you I don't mind. Choose. I'm guessing. I don't know for sure, but I'm predicting white baby. Are you? Yeah. Have you met my husband? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you're right. <laughs> I mean, I just because I'm one of your heroes, I thought you wouldn't mind if I shared. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm your hero. Um, <laughs> you are definitely one of my heroes oh, now, for you. sure. It's mutual. <laughs> uh, how's pregnancy been? It's been so easy, and um, it's odd. It's like I keep kind of expect every every month that goes by, I keep expecting this sort of terrible um oh, feeling no. <laughs> of, no just of you know the symptoms whatever the symptoms are that people have and i've just been really I've did been you not so have lucky. like first trimester tired nauseous no i mean second trimester nothing nothing no third trimester achy stiff nothing wow the only complaint is at night it's just uncomfortable to sleep right um but other than that i, I were you feel... a, a stomach sleeper or back sleeper before I was mostly a stomach sleeper before, but it's not even sleeping on my side. So- it's just she's so heavy. Mm. Um, so I find that very uncomfortable. I just can't figure it out. But uh, And also I'm trying to sleep on my left because that's what they say to do. So That's what they say. That's what they, do you never, including but you. you. No, <laughs> don't I don't say that. No? Oh. No. I say sleep however you're comfortable. But, I mean, obviously you don't want to lay on your belly. And, no. Uh, uh, laying on your back is not really recommended. Re- laying on your back also is so painful. For you. But for some people, they go to sleep on their left side, like the good little patients they're supposed to yeah. be. And then they wake up on their back and freak out. I'm like, oh, don't freak oh, out. interesting, yeah. <laughs> if your body put you there, it's probably okay. You know, the whole thing is that you don't want to compress blood vessels. Mm-hmm. And so if you're laying on your back, you might. If you're laying on your right side, you might. But if you do, you get lightheaded, nauseous, dizzy. It'll wake you up, yeah, probably. Yeah, like you wake up when you have to pee. Why wouldn't you wake up when you're cutting up your own blood supply? <laughs> That's you know? a really good point. So, most of the obstetricians and midwives that I work with are like right side, left side, whatever's more comfortable yeah. for you. Alternate. In fact, I think the only person sleeping on your left side the entire time you're pregnant is good for is your chiropractor because it's going to make you I'm really doing it unbalanced. For you. Thank you. You're the best. <laughs> I owe you. But I, also, when I sleep on my right, she because her feet her feet are on my right, and she really kicks the mm-hmm. crap out of my ribs. Yeah. So I yeah. I experienced that after my children were born. I like to lay in bed and kick the crap out of my Oh, my ribs. God. It's the worst, isn't it's it? It's so bad. Oh, it's I mean, so I bad. can't imagine it from the inside. But. I have a friend whose kid was sleeping in the bed with them. He came in in the middle of the night because he had a bad dream. And in his sleep, he whacked his arm over hmm. and broke his mom's nose. Oh, oh my God. I've I've come very cl- I've come in with like a black eye oh, yeah. to the office. Yeah. People are like, what happened? They assume it happened during labor, like as a doula client, because that's happened too. Yeah. Someone will accidentally scratch you, punch you. Oh, I, I'm sure. Yeah. That's why I don't take strong women anymore. I can't do it. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh. oh my God. I'm like, here, let me do a little arm wrestle. Yes, I can yeah, do Yeah, make I can sure do they pass the test. <laughs> uh, have you been acting, Prego? Um, no, I haven't. And it's not by choice at all because I would, because I haven't really been, sh- I wasn't showing for a really long time. So I could have been. Acting. I had two movies I was supposed to do back to back at the very beginning of my pregnancy. And oddly enough, or not so oddly enough, they both sort of fell apart. Oh. One of them one of them ended up getting moved to later. And I just didn't want to work when I was I think it was I was gonna be seven months pregnant into oh, like, my eighth month and like I just now. thought <laughs> Yeah, I thought that might be weird. I can't even sleep. <laughs> yeah, I don't well I just I just didn't want to have to hide the bump. In the film, I just I, I didn't want the stress of that. Yeah. Um, and then the other one just fell apart completely, and I was really upset about that because I I really wanted to work before I take time off. Yeah. Um, so I was forced into a, a really long break. Maternity leave. <laughs> yeah, I was forced into like a nine month mater. Well, it'll be end up being almost a year. Oh, yeah. But you know, I got I look at it as a blessing. You know, because I've just actors. been focusing on baby. Which is also really nice and something it's, that most people don't get to do. It's a champagne problem. Mm. <laughs> uh, some of the actors I work with, especially in television, that are working a non-pregnant role. Mm-hmm. And as they get bigger and bigger, have to find more and more creative ways to hide their <laughs> yeah. bump. Yeah. Um, talk about difficulty bonding with the baby during pregnancy. Oh. 
Mm. Because they're working so hard to not Pretend be pregnant. like they're not. Yeah, oh, yeah. To that, disconnect from the pregnancy. That makes sense. So maybe it was a good thing. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think it was, I like to think it was for a reason. Yeah. Um, at the beginning, I thought, oh, this is happening because I'm going to have a really rough pregnancy and yeah. and it's I'm going to be really grateful for this. But now that we're towards the end, I think, oh, I would have actually been really good on a set because yeah. now I felt totally normal. Now you've had a totally great normal. pregnancy. It's, it's so terrible that you had an easy pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What a waste. For me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're vegan and gluten-free. How did that come about? Um. The veganism came about because I – well, I'm, a, I'm an animal lover, but I I read this book. You're that, an animal. I'm an animal. And an animal lover. <laughs> True. Um, but I, I read – oh, I read this book by Kimberly Snyder called The Beauty Detox Solution, which a friend of mine gave me. I think it was about probably eight years ago now. And it's just about um, how our bodies – work and how our bodies digest food and why we're not actually meant to digest animal products. And it's not a vegan book at all. It's really mostly about how our bodies work and food combining and all of that stuff. And so it just really spoke to me. And I I don't usually read nutrition books. It's not something that I get excited to do. It's not really I just I just for some reason felt drawn to this. Hmm. And I loved the way she talked about her relationship with food and with the earth and with animals. And at the time, I was mostly vegetarian, but it just completely changed the way I looked at things. And then also it changed the way, because then I was very aware of how I would feel if I had a coffee with, you know, half and half in it rather than almond milk or whatever. Ooh. It really affected um, my you, body. You feel it. You yeah. really feel it. Mm. Yeah, and then I and then so that's how I became a full on vegetarian, and it just took me, <laughs> I think it took me like a year to really give up cheese because I loved cheese so uh. much. But then if you learn about factory farming, which I did, and you know, because at first I thought um, you're not killing the cow to get the cheese, to make the cheese, yeah. yeah, but you you're killing the cow's spirit uh. and you're killing the cow's family and and tearing them from their families. When you actually know what factory farming is, it it affected me so intensely. That, you know, the thought of it was just torture to me. So um, eventually I became a vegan. But the gluten-free thing is mostly just health. I just know that gluten's bad for you, so I try not to eat it. You feel it. better without gluten? Yeah, I definitely do. Do you cheat But sometimes? you know that I love, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> if on... I see a cinnamon bun. <laughs> <laughs> like or, those three gluten-free Or like for a New York bagel. Oh, yeah. Oh. My wife, you know What? What? She just made gluten-free bagels. I what? don't know if they're vegan. I got to find out. But they they're were probably vegan. Amazing. They're like mostly almond yeah. flour. Oh my gosh! She just so whipped good. up some homemade. Maybe for tomorrow. <gasps> it was Passover, so we can't eat like uh, flour or anything like that. And she was just scouring for recipes. Oh my god! And she made these bagels. They were so good right out of the oven. And then I toasted it. And it was, did it? Was it plain or was it everything? It was toasted garlic. Root, mm. Something like that. Because I, I love an everything bagel from New York, in the streets of New York. To self everything <laughs> for Kate. Um, you're going to give birth soon. What are the plans? Do you have a plan? We do. We have a plan. We'll see if it works. Um, the plan is to give birth at home, which I'm really excited about. Um, Why home? I mean, that's like 2% of the people. Again, you're the 2%. I'm a 2 percenter, which I, didn't again, didn't realize that until the other day. When I saw the statistics, oh, I, you thought like half and half. I, yeah, <laughs> no, I just thought I thought it was more than two percent. Mm -hmm. I thought because I I actually know so many people that have oh, given birth at in home. Those circles. Mm -hmm. So to me, it, in my world, it feels like it's much more than two percent. Mm -hmm. um, but I I think like most of the people on your show, because I've listened to almost every podcast mm -hmm. now oh, <laughs> over well. nine months. You're the one. I've taught. I've <laughs> learned so. I've, everything I know is based on your show. So I oh, hope. Thank you. I hope something's I true. I really <laughs> hope it's true. <laughs> um, I I was definitely interested in you know the most natural way to give birth, um, but because of the miscarriage, I wasn't sure what that meant or what the pregnancy was going to be like for me. So I just, I didn't even think about the home birth aspect of it at first. Mm -hmm. um, I also found out early on that I had placenta previa, which 
I didn't realize that most people have anyway, and it eventually goes away. I mean, moves. early on, some people have the block, the placenta sitting low because mm-hmm. the whole uterus is low. Yeah, which to me, I didn't, I didn't really understand that. I just thought, oh God, I've got I'm placenta stuck. previa, yeah. I'm gonna have to C section. That's a bummer. But I wasn't really thinking too much about it. I was just like, we'll see if it moves, and then we can talk about it. And it moved. And at five months, I guess it moved, and so I thought. Oh, now I should start really thinking about this. So I watched The Business of Being Born, which I had never seen. The Bob. Yep. And it did it. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. I watched. I literally watched that and was like, oh, well, yeah, obviously. I, obviously, this is what I need to do. Yeah, Ricky gets people. Yeah. I think it's that bathtub scene. Which one? There's multiple. Oh, with Ricky when she gives birth Oh, in the yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good acting. She's a really good actress. <laughs> she so gets into character. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I was just fascinated by it. My husband had already seen it because his son was also born at home. So my husband already experienced a home birth. Oh, so he's and cool then. Yeah. He was just like, Whatever, wherever you feel safest, I, that's where I want you to do that it. That seems like the right answer. I was like, that was so smart. So clutch. Who taught you that? I know. Seriously. <laughs> I, need, I need lessons. Oh, my God. It was like, what? yeah, it was very clever. Um, Who's coming? Uh, it'll just be me and me and Jamie, and uh, that's my husband, mm-hmm. and uh, our doula, and our midwife. That's it. And a, an assistant, midwife assistant. Oh right? yeah, I guess the assistant would probably come. And then right? the baby. At and then point. I guess the baby. Yeah. Yeah. She's invited. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever she's ready. Um, the dogs. I don't know if our dogs will be there. I have to figure that out. They um, might try and get in the tub. I've got two 17-year-old dogs. Mm. And oh, wow. I feel they're blind, but I feel like they, they'd find their way. They don't want to ever be without me. And I feel in like- In general or uh-huh. in pregnancy? <laughs> no, in general. Oh, it's, really? it's psychotic. So they'll find you? Yeah. If I'm in the birthing tub, they will not stop until they get in that birthing oh, tub. Oh, wow. You can do a test run like this <laughs> way. Just yeah. get in there and see what happens. It would be funny. <laughs> so. Uh, so maybe the dogs. Maybe the dogs, yeah. And um, what about your son? What if you go into labor while your son's home? Um, I think I actually would love it if he was there. I think he is too freaked out about blood. Oh, really? Yeah. If he gets a scratch or if one of us gets a scratch, he really – he's so, it's interesting because he's so tough. But, yeah, blood freaks him out. So um, I think we would probably just have a friend – Come take him just just while the baby pops out, and then have I I want him there as soon as we can so that he can see his little sis because he's been so incredible. Um, it's so funny he'll literally talk to my belly button, and every time without fail she will kick hearing his voice. Oh wow, that's so sweet. yeah. And I heard this ama- a, a friend of mine told me that when her second kid was born, she had her older kid who was about six at the time come in right at the end. And um, the second that the newborn heard her older sibling speak, she turned, she sort of turned Whoa. her face towards the sound of the voice. So I just thought, oh, that's, there's such a bond there. I see people during pregnancy sometimes for six, seven, eight months. And then when they come back with the newborns, like afterwards, they either check their spines or to get postnatal care. As soon as I start talking, oh my god! It's like the babies know uh, very commonly. The babies just become very calm. They know my voice. My baby knows your voice because all I do is listen to the podcast. The podcast. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I walk and listen to it. So she's like, she has a few voices that I. Yeah, I bet oh, that would happen. I'm going to make a few episodes just for the babies. That's a great <laughs> idea. Um, I love your plan. You know, birth is intense. Do you have a plan for oh yeah the intensity the other plan just oh you mean oh, oh I mean both like the like intensity of labor and then also like you know the what ifs um we we took a couple hypno babies classes I've never been a big meditator so I thought that would be an interesting thing to try and incorporate because I I have a a few different people that I know that used hypno birthing or hypno babies during their home births and said that it was really, really effective. And if they had had births before without using it, that this actually made it much easier. So we've been practicing that. Um, I'm sort of like, (laughs) I don't know if I'm going to use it or not. Mm -hmm. I just sort of am doing it as my homework 
in the hopes that it will keep me calm and relaxed. But what do you normally do during intense, intense things that you have to relax? I just, for? Yeah, I just br- I breathe through yeah, it. Yeah, so that's your kind of meditation. Yeah, everybody meditates a little differently, but mm-hmm. I think you have an amazing way of like because I do like in, intense things sometimes with you, and it's uh, you have a great way of like I think when you feel safe, you have a great yeah. way of just like taking a deep breath and telling your body this is okay. Let's, yeah, let's let this happen and not fight it. Yeah, I'm hoping that 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 will just sort of carry me through. Hmm. Um, but you know, like I've, we've done, we and you have a tub. We're do you gonna, like yeah. baths in general? <laughs> I don't usually take baths. You're not the bath person. I love showers. Oh, okay, but, but you I have a shower. I have a shower. Yeah, I could just do it in the shower. I mean, labor. Definitely. You just labor wherever you feel most comfortable. I think that generally first babies take a while to come out, so mm-hmm. you end up in a lot of different scenes. You know? Yeah. So maybe you'll be cuddling the dogs at some point. And maybe in the pool. Maybe in the pool. Maybe in the tub. Maybe in the shower. Maybe in bed. Maybe outside going for a walk. Who knows? Yeah. I'm just going to wing it, even though I feel very prepared. I feel like I've done all of the, the research and all of that, but I just I also know that you can't really prepare <laughs> in a lot of ways. Truth. And yeah. and that, and sometimes it's because birth is somewhat unpredictable. You know, it doesn't go exactly according to your plan. Mm-hmm. But you have a backup plan. Yep. Like, We're, yeah, and we've got our backup doctor just in case and, you know, the backup hospital. So – and I'm not – you know, I just – I'm I'm sort of – I'm not afraid of that either. Um, hospitals don't scare me necessarily. Um they're just not as appealing as my own bed. Yeah, that makes sense. To me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your own bathroom. The hospital oh, bathroom yeah, is never gosh. like comforting. No. Hospital tub, even though your hospital has tubs. Yeah, but. Not like your tub. No. And not like that birth tub. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's a lot we covered today. That was a lot. I, prob- I, I just want to say, I would never usually share all these intimate details, but this podcast has been so emotionally supportive and um, like such a game changer for me for the past eight months. It's a friend of mine recommended it. And I, like I said, I do a lot. I've been doing a lot of walking since I'm pregnant. And, and I just have listened to so many of your guests. And, and it just made me feel this entire time has really made me feel not alone and also has just taught me so much. Mm. Um, And so when I when I came in to work with you, I just thought, um, and you asked if I wanted to be a part of it. My, my initial reaction would normally be, no, I don't want to share these intimate details, but it's helped me so much to hear all these other people. So, you know, hopefully somebody listens and hears something that they relate to. Well, first of all, my mom always listens. So oh, she'll that. relate. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, so, laughs> um, thank you. That means so much to me. I really yeah. appreciate that. First of all, the way you talk about it, I'm going to start listening to this podcast. <laughs> it sounds amazing. Um, but also, I really appreciate you coming and sharing just who you really are. It's And that's all I ever see is just real you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. So thank you. But the last question that I'll, I'll – because I opened with it and never got back to it is how come you're all Rooney? Oh, because Rooney is my mother's maiden name. So um, before my mom got married and became a Mara, her name was Kathleen Rooney. And it's just a, you know, it's an important name to my family. And so she thought... Well, because their last name's not going to be Rooney, I'll just make their middle names Rooney. Oh, that's sweet. Are the um, boys Rooney too? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> just the girls, okay. which is funny, but a lot of my but cousins- But she's a girl, so- Yeah, there you go. A lot of my cousins have the middle name Rooney oh, they're as well. they're all Rooney as well? Mm-hmm. Are you going to pass Rooney on? Um, I'm not sure. I think maybe I'll pass Mara on. Oh. Yeah, you have to- you know to, what I mean? Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't pass them all on. It'll right. Just, in three oh. generations, it'll be way too long. It'll be like <laughs> 10 names. Yeah, no can't do it uh that's all i got all right i'm excited because you're gonna come back you I'm promised come ba- already gonna, i already promised Pinky after swore. this baby arrives and now we have proof after this baby comes and we're gonna find out how your journey continued okay I, I can't wait thanks so much for joining me thank you uh at home thanks for listening to us if you want more good pregnancy stuff i recommend informedpregnancy.com <laughs> I got a whole lot of questions for you This kid's gonna test my will I got a lot to learn and my baby's too <laughs> This podcast is a proud member of Parents on Demand 
a network of high-quality shows for families just like yours. Download our free network app on Apple and Android and listen to your favorite episodes on the go.